Hi there, everyone. I'm so happy to be doing a Facebook Live with you again this week. Um, it's Sunday, just after 11 a.m. where I am here in the Pacific in California. And um, I've missed you guys because I think I haven't done it for a couple of weeks. I was on a cruise last week. I will tell you about it in a moment. But just a couple of things to do with housekeeping. I would love for you to tell me in the comments as to how the sound is doing. We're trying out a new technology right now. And so tell me if the sound cuts out, tell me in the comments and we'll react to it right away. We'll fix it. So in this, uh, so I've been listening to you, hearing you and a lot of people, a lot of you feel that uh, when you comment, when you ask me questions, I'm not getting to your questions. And one of the reasons is because the technology we have been using, we use a video cam and not, um, not a smartphone or an iPad or a computer to record these Facebook Lives. And the reason is so that my husband Danny, who's the all-round tech geek, um, he, so that he can get a good quality recording of the video so that we can share it on our newsletter and on YouTube and also so he can turn it into a podcast so people can just listen to it when they're doing other things. We're aware that there are a lot of people who don't use Facebook and they write to me and they say, we're not on Facebook, but we want to see your videos. And so this is why Danny uses a good quality camera. But with that goes, um, of course, the more complicated equipment you use, the more chances are that there's going to be technical um, glitches. So we need to hear from you in the comments if we are facing any technical glitches. But today he has introduced a new piece of technology where I have an iPad in front of me so that he can punch up the comments up here so I can read your comments and hopefully get to more of them than I normally do because I want you to know that I do hear you when I don't get to your comments it's not deliberate it's because I can't see them or they're going too fast for the people behind the scenes to catch them um, it's absolutely not deliberate because um, I know some of you feel bad if other people's comments are being answered and yours aren't or if you post your comments several times and it's not being answered. So a couple of other things that uh, we look for is that we tend to go for the comments that are relevant to the subject I'm speaking about. But the other comments, the other questions are valuable because it gives me um, an understanding of what it is you want to know more about. So I often address those in future um, in future Facebook Live videos, even if I don't call your name or don't read it out as being from you, we do take those questions <clears throat> um, in mind. We make a note of them and I do address them in future issues. So um, anyway, having said that, please feel free to post your comments and I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. And of course, I just love to hear from you. Even if you don't have a question, I love to hear from you. I love it when you just tell me where you're from and who you are and where you tuned in from and uh, things like that. It's just really nice to just get a hello from you and to know that you're there and you're saying hi. Um, last week, I was on this amazing cruise, which was presented, the, the workshops were presented by Dr. Joe Dispenza and myself. So we co-hosted this cruise and I think it was just under 400 people that uh, that attended and we had a brilliant time and I've posted photos of it and I posted the photos in my last newsletter. If you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, I would love it if you did because I like sharing photos and things like that and I usually tell you about what's been going on in the past week in my life in these newsletters. So, you know, check it out. It's on my website. But anyway, today's topic, what I wanted to talk about was living life from the inside out. And the reason I chose this topic, and I'm going to explain more what it means to live life from the inside out, is because I believe that when we do turn inward, when we do actually live life more from the inside out, it actually heals a lot of our issues. So I have people writing in and, and saying they have issues with their health or issues with depression or asking, how do you heal depression? How do you heal this? Or um, it, or maybe they have issues like with other people and people pleasing and so on. I feel that when we truly learn to live life 
from the inside out, or what I mean by living life from the inside out, it resolves a lot of these other issues. It's almost like a one size fits all. It's a one answer, uh, one answer that answers a lot of different questions. So here's what I mean about living life from the inside out. We are currently bombarded with information coming at us from the outside world. People who are particularly um, uh, sensitive, people who are more, who are closer to being empaths, people who don't know where their own boundaries end and others begin. We, a lot of us get this sense, this feeling of sensory overload. It's like our senses are being bombarded from the outside world. And we take it on as though it's our own. I'd love to hear from you if anybody relates to that. Do you relate to taking on the problems of the world, the emotions of the people around you, everything that's happening? Do you relate to taking it on as though it's your own? That it's almost like you can't separate between what's happening outside and what's actually yours. What are your emotions being generated by what you are going through versus everything else that's coming in from the outside world and affecting you? I mean, I guess the best analogy I can use is that um, if you imagine something like a little, the light coming in from a little flashlight, and for most people, that's all it is. It's a little flashlight, and they can, and if it's daylight, they can almost walk past this little flashlight or this light that's on without even noticing that a light is on. But for some of us, even that little light feels like a floodlight. We, it's almost like we can't differentiate between the light that's shining at us from a little flashlight and a light that's shining at us from a huge flashlight that's actually um, drowning us in light, you know, it's like completely encompassing us. And I don't know if that's a good analogy, but somebody who suffers from sensory overload, like somebody who is an empath, super sensitive, it feels like they're drowning in, in not just information, but in feelings, emotions, sensations, and there's conflict within their emotions. And people who feel that way are usually most susceptible to things like um, physical illnesses and challenges, as well as things like depression. And that's because we can't differentiate the outside world from the inside world. Living life from the inside out means giving priority to your inner world as opposed to the outer world. And I wanna talk a little bit more about how to do that. And I actually believe anyone would benefit from doing that, whether you suffer from sensory overload or not, whether you're super sensitive or not, whether you're an empath or not, it doesn't matter. If you're suffering from any kind of physical challenges, emotional challenges, um, the best way to heal them, and if you're suffering from depression, is to really start to learn how to tune inwards. So. If you imagine yourself as a, let's say a smartphone, and I use this analogy quite often, if you imagine you're a smartphone, um, when you're a smartphone, you need, your batteries need to be charged. They need to be charged frequently, otherwise your batteries drain. But even while, you're, when, while your batteries, while you're not in charge mode, while you're using your smartphone, the more apps you have on, the faster the batteries discharge. So this is the way it is for us. The apps that are draining the, our, our own batteries are things like being super sensitive, having experiencing sensory overload, doing things that stimulate our senses more than necessary. So what I would suggest that you start by doing is you start by asking yourself, what are the things that are really blowing my senses out of all proportion? In other words, what's making me feel deep anger or deep um, sadness or depression or drawing me into other people's dramas? And it means really being honest with yourself and identifying these things so that you can start turning off those apps that are draining you. It means saying no when you mean no instead of saying yes when you actually mean no. So it's so the first thing to do is start 
turning off those apps that are running in the background, which some of them, maybe you're not even consciously aware are running in the background. You're not consciously aware and they're just running and they're just draining your batteries. So as you learn to turn them off, so here are the things to look for. Where are you saying yes when you actually would have preferred to have said no? Said no? Uh, who are the people that are constantly drawing you into their dramas? And they could be people who you love, who are really um, people who care about you. So this is not about judging them, but where are you constantly getting sucked into their dramas when they probably wouldn't even be offended if you took time out for yourself, if you said you were busy, I can't join you today, I can't spend the day with you because you want to go and recharge your batteries. So... Um, also, do you watch too much news on TV? Do you watch too much political discussion? Um, you know, and people tell me that, oh, but uh, if I don't watch the news, how do I stay on top of current affairs? So I find there's two types of news you can tune into. You can tune into global news once a week and you will find out everything that's going on, even twice a week. But what we call news in America is actually political gossip. It really is. And it is churned out every day for the purpose of injecting fear and separating you or separating us as humans. So always remember, we are humans first. We are not our political party and all, but, but the news channels thrive on separating us. And for those of you who take this on personally, it's draining your batteries. So stop watching it stop feeling that people are their political labels or belong to a particular uh, political party. We are humans first before any label. We are humans first. Remember that. Um, so anyway, turn off the news if it's affecting you. And so the first thing is to go in and identify everything that's affecting you, the apps that are running in the background that are draining your batteries, and start turning them off. That's number one. Number two is to ensure that you charge, that you recharge your batteries every day. So most of us who are drained, who are lost, who are in depression, who are feeling physical illness, we are not doing either of those things. And I'm going to get to a third thing soon. So how do we recharge our batteries? We recharge our batteries by turning inward and listening to our inner self. Listen to the and watch the visions that come to you. So you could be getting insights and visions while you're in the shower. You could be getting it just before you drop off to sleep. You get insights and visions when you go for a walk in nature. You need to take time to do these things. Even when you sit and meditate, when you spend time by yourself, I get a lot of visions when I listen to music and when I'm out in nature and even when I'm ha having a hot bath. For me, sitting in a hot bathtub gives me a lot of visions and insights, especially if I have candles on and music. Music is another great one for me and walking in nature. Being by the ocean, listening to the ocean waves. All these recharge my batteries and how they do that is that I may put out a question and then I get the imagery and the visions and voices and I feel the guidance telling me how to deal with my current issue. I get the guidance on how to move forward. I get the guidance on what, you know, what it really is. It's the connection to that higher self that person I was before I even came into this physical body, that higher self that lives forever, it lived before I was born, it continues to live after I die, that higher self that came in with this calling, this longing, this yearning. I lost that voice as I listened to the outer voices, as I listened to the outer world. And if you are a people pleaser, you lose that voice sooner because it becomes more important for you to listen to the voices outside and not the images and the calling inside. Now, people on the outside will tell you it's your imagination. Well, here's some breaking news for you. Your imagination is your connection to your truth, to your higher self. If it's your imagination, it's actually a good thing, not a bad thing. So 
Absolutely allow your imagination to run wild when you're sitting in the bath or going for that walk in nature or listening to music because your imagination is your connection to your higher self. Your imagination is your inner world. Okay, so how do you know if what you are getting is truth versus uh, whether it's your mind, whether it's external messages. Sometimes people ask, a lot of people ask me that. They say, oh, but I get a lot of other messages that are fear-based, and so how do I know which one is truth? So here's the thing. Your true connection with your higher self will always give you love-based messages. It'll give you messages that make you feel good. It'll give you a path out of the issue you are in now, whatever that issue is, whether it's depression, whether it's a physical healing challenge, whatever that issue is, your higher self tries to find ways to guide you out. Our bodies are geared towards healing. Our bodies are not our enemies. They are trying to help us. It's us who don't listen, who give our power to the outside world that are our own enemies, our mind. So whenever it's um, a message that feels uplifting, when it feels inspirational, when it feels, oh my gosh, I'm getting goosebumps, this is too good to be true, that is your higher self trying to tell you this is who you're meant to be, this is your calling, this is who you came in with the yearning to be. So always listen to that self. The self that is giving you the fear-based messages like, who do you think you are? You're not going to make it. Be practical. You got to take on a job that you hate because you have to pay the bills. Those are the messages from the conditioning of the outer world. Those are not real you because the real you would never give you fear-based messages. Truth, the real you, the truth that comes through never makes you feel small, never makes you feel fearful. It never dims your light. The things that do that, the messages that do that, are the messages that come from the world outside. The fear-based messages, the ones that make you feel small, those are not based on who you came here to be. Those are, are based on the conditioning that you've accumulated over a lifetime of being here and listening to the outer world. This is why it's so important to get in touch and in tune with who you are. Even if you're in danger, and you need to know you're in danger, the messages from your true higher self will still not be fear-based. The way they help you out of danger is by helping you with the solution. It's by telling you that you, this is how you get from here to there. So the messages are always love-based messages, even to get you out of danger. Even if you're in a place where it is fearful, the true messages will always use a love-based method to get you out of danger. So remember, fear-based messages are not in truth. So now the more you tune in to your true self, your real self, your higher self, the more you are charging your batteries. So here's another, the third thing I want you to watch out for is people who are people pleasers, who are doormats. Those are the ones that find it the hardest to take their power back and listen to their higher self and silence the voices that are bombarding them and the sensory overload that's bombarding them from the outside. The people who are people pleasers, who um, are afraid of disappointing others, afraid of shame, I want you to be aware of that. I want you to be aware how to do that. And the way to climb out of fear is not on focusing on, oh, I... Um, I'm filled with fear. I don't want to disappoint them. It's by shifting your focus to love. The only way to transcend fear is to increase love. How do you increase love? You start to choose consciously, take time out to tune into your inner self and choose to focus on the love based messages. The only way to transcend fear is to focus on love. You cannot transcend fear by focusing on fear and trying to get rid of fear. You can only transcend fear by focusing on, on love. So, so spend time charging your batteries, soaking in a tub, and, or going out for a walk in nature, and listen 
to the love-based messages and follow them, actually follow them, focus on them, follow them, believe them, even if you have to do this exercise every day. One other tip to help you to charge your batteries and to focus on your inner self is that people who are people pleasers, empaths and so on, doormats, find it very hard to receive. You find it very hard to receive from the outer world. Um, you're very good at giving to the point you're drained. That's why your batteries get drained. Um, and that's how you lose yourself to the outside world. You end up living a life that's not your life. You end up um, you end up warping yourself um, into a pretzel just to please other people. Well, those are the people that are not good at receiving. I want you to be aware and I want you to tell yourself, I am going to receive something every single day. If you can receive at least two things every day. I don't tell you guys to practice a random act of kindness to others. I don't tell you to be of service to others. And the reason I don't tell you to do that is because those of you who are attracted to my work and my teachings and my books are already doing that. You're doing that to the point of draining yourself and you've forgotten to take care of yourself. So I'm here to remind you, tune into your inner self, find out what your dreams, your goals, your yearnings, your calling is and follow that. And it's totally okay to receive. It's okay to receive abundance from the world. It's okay to receive abundance from other people because other people are channels of your higher self. They're channels and vessels of God and the universe and they're here to give you. So just receive graciously because when they are doing it, they are thanking you for being who you are. How many of you, when you receive something, immediately feel, oh my God, how am I going to repay them? And you bend yourself out of shape like a pretzel and stop being who you are. Actually think of your gifts that you're receiving as a thank you for something you've already done. So you don't need to repay it. It's the universe's way of thanking you for being who you are, for being the generous soul that you are, for being so giving. The abundance that you receive is to recharge your batteries so that you can keep being who you are. You don't need to be someone else. You don't need to warp yourself like a pretzel. Now I'd love to take some questions but um, my screen has gone blank, so I'm going to turn to Danny, my wonderful <laughs> boo, to pass me some, to read me out some questions. Donna asks, how do I detach from my emotions when they arise, i.e. from stress due to a job, if it causes stress, anger, sadness, etc.? Should I quit? <laughs> Do you know, I'm actually going to say yes, you should, but I, it could be more fearful for you to quit, um, to quit like so abruptly right now because you might have bills to pay and so on. But I would certainly um, definitely have that on the forefront of my mind that, okay, everything I do now is to set myself up to something towards something better and everything I do now is leading towards me leaving this job. And, um, you know, because it starts with our past conditioning. So many of you are stuck in jobs that you don't like, that are making you stressful, that are creating illness in your body. So many of you are struggling financially because of past conditioning. You may have some conditioning that's telling you that, um, if you're doing work where you follow your heart, if you're following your heart, if you're doing work that's considered spiritual, you shouldn't be making money and so on. And all this is very poor conditioning from our cultures, our societies. You truly should be receiving abundance for following your heart. It doesn't make sense for you to make money only from doing things that you hate to do and then feel that when you're doing something spiritual, you should be living in poverty. In fact, you should be supported in doing things that are conscious and spiritual. You should make money from them so that you can continue doing that because you're helping other people and you're helping the planet. How are you helping anyone by being in a job that you hate just because it pays the bills? To me, that paradigm makes no sense whatsoever. And it's time to leave that behind. It really is. That's why we've created 
all these businesses where people run sweatshops just to make money and then the people who are doing really conscious spiritual work are struggling. They're struggling to make ends meet because they believe money is not spiritual. And then in order to pay the bills, they end up going to work for the very companies that we don't support because they support exploiting other people to make money. So do you see how this paradigm turns us against ourselves? We really need to start doing work that, um, that embraces who we are, that reflects who we are. We need to start doing work where we can follow our heart. Um, and, and so I think it's probably another long conversation that I should do an entire video on, on how to do that, because I know so many of you are stuck in jobs and you can't leave them right away. But what can I tell you right now to help you just in the interim until I do such a, such a video? Uh, it would be to tell you that um, be aware and be on the lookout for doing things. Um, if you stay in a job that you hate, it could start to um, erode at things like your self-esteem, it erodes at your health, it erodes so many other things about you, it discharges your batteries, and, um, uh, and the longer you stay at it, <clears throat> the more disheartening it becomes. So put it at the forefront. Start spending less time at that job, start researching other things, start becoming clear on who you are and what you really want to do. The clearer you are about what you want to do and who you are and what is your calling, the sooner you can bring it into your, into your reality. Because all time exists all at once. And what we attract to us is not just our thoughts. It's not just our thoughts that create our reality. It's who we are. And the more you value yourself, the more you feel you're worthy and deserving of work that nourishes you, work that reflects who you are, work that makes you the abundance or the money that you deserve, the, the sooner you will attract it into your life. It's about the inner work you do inside. It's not about chasing and pursuing the right job. I hope that really helps because I know that when I was ready to do the work I did, that I'm doing now, when I was ready, and up until that point, um, so I had cancer, I came back, I had healed, but I wasn't ready to sh share it with the world because I was afraid of the pushback, which I was already getting. I was sharing on forums and there was so much pushback, I stopped sharing. But one day when I was ready to share it with the world, when I realized this is who I had come here to be, this is who I am, that was the day when Wayne Dyer discovered my story. That was the day when I got the email from Hay House saying Wayne Dyer had discovered my story. It took them five months to track me down, but the day they discovered me was the day I was ready to share my story, not a day before. So it's not about chasing and pursuing, it's about knowing who you are. And when you know who you are, the world will provide you with the abundance that you need to fulfill what you need to do. Because what happens is, you know you're really in it when you're able to nourish yourself by doing what feels right to you. You're able to charge your batteries, but you're also able to serve the world, serve humanity, serve the planet without having to bend yourself out of shape like a pretzel and discharge your batteries. So here's where you're in imbalance. It's when the work you do is discharging your batteries to the point of being drained so that you have to spend your time trying to figure out all the different ways to recharge your batteries so that you can spend another day doing what you hate to do, which discharges your batteries. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. You need to do work that actually charges your batteries and supports you in continuing to do this every single day. So I hope that was helpful and let's go into another question. Aki, and I apologize if I pronounced their name wrong, says, how can we know if we're on the right path? So you know, it, was that the full question? Yes, uh, it's, it's how do one can know 
if he is on the right path. Okay, got it. So how do you know if you're on the right path? You know you're on the right path when your batteries are not getting drained all the time. When you don't feel conflicted inside, that's when you know you're on the right path. When you feel that what you're doing when you feel good, when you feel buzzed at the end of the day, at the end of a day of doing whatever it is you do, when you go to bed and you feel good about yourself, that's how you know when you're on the right path. Now, sometimes, even when you're on the right path, you do get challenges, but those challenges are for your own growth. So, there are two types of challenges. There are, actually there's probably more, but I'm gonna talk about two types of challenges. The one type of challenge is when you are trying to be what everybody else wants you to be. When you're trying to please everyone and you're trying to be what everyone else wants you to be, you're living life from the outside in, not the inside out. So in other words, you're taking your information from the outside and then you're trying to meet all the expectations on the outside and you warp yourself all out of shape and you start to live a life that's not your life. You start to live a life that you think everyone else wants you to live and you start to become what you think everyone else wants you to be. Then when you meet challenges, they're actually not your challenges. They are the challenges of the people you are trying to be or the expectations you're trying to meet. And that's how we get really stressed. And that's how we get depressed. It's when we're living a life that's not ours. That can be really depressing because we don't know a way out because this life is not the one that we chose to live when we came into the world. So when you are not feeling all those things that I told you, when every day you're feeling your batteries are charging, when you're doing like I feel that right now, doing this Facebook Live with you, I love doing it. I feel my batteries are charging. Um, I love writing the book I'm writing. And by the way, I'm um, the movie, the movie, the Hollywood movie of my story is getting made. That charges my batteries. So when things are happening, synchronicities are falling into place, things are going in your life that are aligned with who you are, with who you want to be, um, then you know that, yes, I am aligned. I am being who I'm supposed to be. That's, that's really the best way I can think of. And what I'll do is I'll also think more on your question, Aki, and if I come up with any more answers, I will be addressing them in future issues because it's a great question that how do we know when we're aligned? And at this point, the best answer I can think of is when your batteries are not constantly being discharged, when you're not constantly feeling drained, and when you're feeling upbeat more, and when you're happy in yourself and in your work. So thank you. Lynetta, she says, I can feel people inside my body as though it's me. There is no distinction. I believe it's being empathetic. Yes, it is. Also part of my emotional intelligence. I had to be able to read my parents and my environments to keep safe. Survival instincts. Yes. I have so many voices inside me. I don't know who is me within all the voices in my mind. Um, that is actually not uncommon what you're going through, Lynetta, because it's survival instincts. For me, survival instincts was being aware of what everybody wanted me to be. Um, it, this all kicks in. Even... Uh, even being an empath, I'm, I think all of us are born empaths, but our survival instincts kick in and shapes us. And so some of us grow up to continue to absorb everybody's emotions. And some of us, maybe we had a different kind of childhood where we create more layers between us and other people. Like if you grew up maybe not trusting the people closest to you, um, so we grow up with, with layers between us and them. And so it protects us. So different people have different, have accumulated different layers depending on what they needed to do as babies and as children to survive. That's what I believe. I truly believe that every single one of us is born perfect. Every single one of us is born with these acute sensory um, abilities to be able to sense our, our parents and when they're around and to be able to sense our way through the world. And that is part of our survival as well. But if we are getting too much negative input, we then build this really strong filter to filter it out. 
And so that gives some people the appearance of being insensitive as they grow older, but actually it's just a layer. Underneath, I really believe that all of us are empaths. So in answer to your question, it was Lynetta, right? Um, in answer to your question, I really do feel you need more alone time. You need to spend more time alone, more time in nature. Perhaps you even need to connect with a pet or newborn babies. You need to reconnect with purer energies. Get back in touch with who you truly are, your inner self, your inner child, whatever you want to call it. Um, some people cringe from some of these terms and some people relate to them. So to me, it doesn't matter what terms you, you use, but you need to get back to the Lynette, the child who was born into this world with hopes and desires and intentions. So for you, I really would suggest more time alone. I would suggest going on an information detox or an information fast, which means really limiting your time on social media. You know, for people who are super empathetic, who are super open to emotions of others, even social media can be pretty overwhelming. It can be pretty harmful. I limit my time on social media because I actually really get affected by many of the negative comments that I don't mean just to me. In fact, Thank God, I'm quite blessed that I don't get a lot of negative comments, but, uh, and also I have really great um, social media and uh, coordinators and administrators who um, try to limit the number of nasty comments. And having said that, I don't, uh, it doesn't bother me when people disagree with me. I am truly talking about the mean comments. There is no reason for mean comments and there's no need for it. There's no room for it. And, um, and so my administrators have no tolerance for that. So anyway, I'm talking about when I look on other people's Facebook pages and other public figures, and if any, you know, whenever anyone dares to take a stand on something, some of the mean comments can be really harsh. And for people who are super empathetic, I know I'm digressing, but I have a point here. For people who are super empathetic, I would truly say limit your time on social media. I really would. I would highly suggest it, highly recommend it. Go back to reading. You know, I don't even use um, my iPad anymore for reading ebooks uh, because and the reason is because when i'm holding an ipad there's always this temptation to go onto social media and to go back online and go on the internet i actually prefer i've gone back to use to to ordering proper books when i read so if i'm going <clears> to <throat> if i'm going to read something <clears throat> excuse me i don't use my digital device anymore i actually read it on books um, so really, that's the best thing I can suggest for you because I actually hear you. I get you. Um, when people write to me, when they write to me and tell me what they're going through, it's, it can be sometimes the things I read and hear, my heart truly goes out to them. But I always have to remember I need to take time out so that I can do what I do and be who I am and bring myself into the world. Because remember... If you allow yourself to drown in the problems of others, you then actually become part of the problem and not part of the solution. If you can actually keep yourself filled with light, if you can keep yourself filled with joy, if you can find the humor in situations, if you can find the light, if you can find the love, and this is the most important part, if you can stay in the place of joy and find the love, if you can still find the love in even the worst situations, that you take yourself wherever you go. And so you will take the love wherever you go. And that is the most important thing. To me, love is the solution to every single problem in the world. And I feel that for each of us, each and every single one of us, when we open our mouths, when we comment on social media, when we speak, we should always remind ourselves, am I bringing love into this world? Am I driven by love? 
or am I driven by fear, anger, hatred, division? Just ask yourself that one question. And as long as no matter what you say, no matter what you write, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, if it comes from the place of love within you, you're okay. You're truly okay. So thank you so much for tuning in. In fact, do we have any final questions? That you, One more? One more question, which has to be plugged in here. Okay. It's from Monica, and it's Anita. Burning question. <laughs> I know that you saw many people in the other realm, but did you see animals? Will I see my doggies? Is Cosmo still with you? Yes, he if is. Not, where is he? Thank you. This is something I wanted to ask you on the cruise, but I wasn't able to. Aw, yes, you will be with the spirits of your animals again. You so will. Our animals, you know, um, it, and I'm going slightly off topic here, but I know that in a lot of um, cultures and religions where they believe in reincarnation and they feel that, if you were to reincarnate as an animal, it's a step down. It's like, oh my gosh, you've got bad karma. You're going to reincarnate as an animal. So here's what I'm going to tell you. I actually believe the opposite. I actually believe animals are more evolved than us. Animals are actually, they guide us. They are our angels. They are so pure. They don't have those judgments and those layers of filters and, and the greed and um, all the things that we accumulate when we're in this life. So animals are not only there, but they are in full force. They are the ones guiding us. They are the ones who look after us. Even now, I still feel Cosmo. And even though they are not in the physical biology of an animal, their spirit, their soul lives forever. And they are so pure and so beautiful and they are still with you. So thank you, Monica, for that question. And if I had emojis, I'd be flashing them up right now on the screen because I love you all. I love your emojis. I love your questions. And again, I want to say I'm so sorry to the people whose questions I, I haven't got to. I will read them. I will try and address them at a future Facebook Live, please bear with me. I try to get to as many of you as I can. A hundred percent, it's not personal. I love every single one of you who, um, who watches, who listens, who posts, and even the ones who don't. I love you whether you agree with me or not, because you're human, you're an essence, you have pure consciousness, you have a purpose, and for that reason only, I love you, thank you, and I will be back really soon, maybe in less than a week. Thank you, love you, and see you soon. Bye.